What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Midhunter Comic, and today we're having a battle between variant covers versus just the regular main cover A. We live in an age of comics in which almost every single comic book receives at least one variant, and usually the variant that comes out is either comparable or even cooler than the original cover. Which makes sense, because if you're doing a variant cover, it should be even cooler than the regular cover. That's why people are paying extra to get your variant, right? There are many examples in which that's the case, but sometimes there are cover A's, main covers, that just are too bulletproof. Yes, we're talking about 20 variant covers that couldn't hold a candle to the regular main cover. Make sure you're liking and commenting down below. I've figured out what the 20,000 subscriber giveaway is gonna be. You're gonna get Superboy Zero and Issue 9, the first cameo and the first full appearance of King Shark. For our first match, we're gonna look at We Live, cover 1A versus We Live 1 Comic Mint exclusive. Cover A's got a very unique art style, very unique tone, and overall a very memorable cover of recent comic books. It's got a lot going on, but it doesn't get too busy due to the clever use of a white background. All in all, it sets the stage, and when I read this comic, this is the cover I picture. Now let's take a look at the Comic Mint edition. Weird artistic choices. Her hair looks weird, the body looks weird, the proportions look weird, her face looks younger than this old man baby. It all in all is not a very appealing cover and even verges into the land of ugly covers. We gotta give this to cover A. Next up in the most recent entry here, we got Captain Carter number one, the first appearance of Captain Carter in comic books. So there's actually a few versions of this one, including a Carnage version, a Suffragette cover, a close-up headshot cover. I think the second most favorite cover is probably going to be the What If homage, because her first appearance was in the Disney show What If. It matches the look of the show, and it's a pretty cool cover. All in all, none of these come quite close to the stance and the now iconic artwork of this excellent illustration of Captain Carter bursting through center page, inviting her way into comic readers' minds, and I am a bit of a sucker for newspaper backgrounds. Even with all the variants lined up next to each other, this one would seem to be the obvious choice. Batman 106 main cover A is one of the best covers, quite honestly, in the last five years. So when we got this Jimenez variant showing the entire Bat family, normally you'd think, hey, this is pretty darn good. This is a sweet cover. And you'd be right if only you don't put it next to the main cover A. Main cover A with its gorgeous yellows and its gorgeous backdrop and excellent use of outline. With that creepy reimagined scarecrow, even an awesome cover with every Bat family member can't beat this one. Sorry. Nice try though. Up next, we're going Marvel again with King in Black number one, main cover A versus the one in 500 variant. Cover A is a dope, memorable comic book cover, and shouldn't that be the striving goal of all new big events? Yes, it should. This one's got it all. It's got all the characters that are appearing in the book. It's got Null, it's got Venom, it's got everybody. And it looks like it's going to be a big event book. Switch on over to the 1 in 500 variant, which you gotta imagine the price tag you'll need to pick this one up. So you'd think the result would be something masterful, well, it's a little underwhelming if you put it next to the main cover. Quite honestly, it has a little bit too much of a sketch-like quality. Now this is Donny Cates himself doing this cover, which is pretty cool, but it's just a bit too scribbly, a bit unfinished, and lacking in the polish you'd really want to see on a big event book. Up next we have Dark Knight 3 The Master Race, issue number 4 cover A versus issue number 4 The Miller Variant. This is a quick and easy one because there really is no comparison. One's a cool skydiving bat signal awesome unique cover that is not really like anything we've ever seen and the other one is the stuff of nightmares. Is this supposed to be an over sexualization of Wonder Woman? Because it's not working. Also is that a baby? That is legitimately frightening. Up next we got Deadpool and Cable number 25. Now believe it or not I actually think Rob Liefeld's art is underrated because I also feel that he's contributed such a significant way to our culture. However, does he occasionally have some pretty rough covers? And this one's by no means the worst, it's just that he made Cable look like a right fool. 
The anatomy is always a little funky, always a little questionable, but this one is just woof. I mean, you know, just check it out yourself. Not that I think cover A is fantastic, but it's a much more cohesive attempt than this George Perez homage cover here. Hey, at least he showed his feet. Next up, we got Green Lantern issue 25 versus Green Lantern issue 25, the one in 10 retailer incentive variant. So Green Lantern 25 is kind of a big deal and it houses a lot of first cameos of major appearances, but it's also the end of the Sinestro War. It, it's a big deal. The problem with cover B, which is a 1 in 10 incentive cover, yeah, there's a couple problems with the faces, but it doesn't really convey too much about the story, whereas the main cover shows Anti-Monitor in the background, Kyle Rayner and Hal Jordan fighting Sinestro. It's a much more epic and scenic cover that fits the story infinitely better than cover B ever could. I know a lot of friends that feel this way. They like picking the other one up just because it's a little bit more valuable, but everybody seems to agree this is the one that you put on the wall. Champions cover 1A, I actually don't love that much, but when you compare it to the local comic book shop day variant, it's the clear winner. I am actually just going to show you the variant, and unfortunately, this is a Neil Adams cover. I almost feel bad putting a Neil Adams cover, rest in peace legend. Neil's one of the best but maybe he kind of phoned it in on this one. Everybody's anatomy looks funky. Look at Miles up there in the front. It's hard to tell who's in the foreground, who's in the background. The faces look lazy, Ms. Marvel looks rough, Hulk looks rough. I think Miles in the front might be one of my least favorite parts though. Yeah, this one, I think I'll stick to my 70s Batman and Green Lantern covers. Another recent entry here, Batgirls number 1A versus Variant 1D. Here's a relatively cool looking title to a new series. And then here's something that if your kid drew it, you'd be stoked. But when you find out that a professional artist did this for a cover, ooh, it doesn't work as much. Wonder Woman 1984 issue 1A versus 1B. Listen, this variant came from a right place. It's part of a body positivity movement to show women and young girls that, look, you can look a little bit more normal. You don't have to look hypersexualized and like a supermodel. Here's the problem. That would have worked maybe for a different character. Wonder Woman doesn't look like that. She just doesn't. And we would know. She's been around for a few decades. So a lot of people felt that this cover was just a little bit pandering to a crowd other than the ones that actually read the comic books. And the message got a little bit lost on us. I remember this comic book had people worried that Superman and Batman were going to get dad bods in the next issue. Oh boy. Again, good intentions, but I'm going to stick with that cover A. Deadpool's Secret Wars issue 1A versus... 1E, the Run the Jewels variant. So if you're a fan of rap from like 2013 and 14, this cover would be great for you. It's a Run the Jewels cover. Even I like a few songs. However, it does come across as maybe even a little bit of an ugly cover, especially when you put it up to the regular cover A. Doesn't really hold a candle. There is a niche crowd that would love this. Then again, this variant clearly isn't made for everyone. It really is made for fans of Run the Jewels. Batman issue four, main cover versus Tim Sales issue four. Cover A of Batman issue four is pretty cool and definitely works with the story if you read the books. It's a match. Whereas the beginning of the Tom King Batman run had a lot of Tim Sale variants and Tim Sale art is definitely an acquired taste. I mean, hey, he did such awesome stuff as The Long Halloween, Dark Victory. He's almost like a Sam Keith, though. You know, you like him or you don't. And a lot of people found that of all the Tim Sale covers, it was issue four, which was the most forgettable. People didn't like Batman's anatomy, thought it didn't really capture the character. I personally think it's fine, but I do agree that it does nothing for the story. I think cover A is a much better match. Catwoman 39 is a pretty fantastic cover. Now look at the ugly faces on 30. B. What hurts the most about this variant is it's from Jim Valent, who literally had an almost a hundred book run on Catwoman in the 90s. So he's a seasoned vet and there's really no excuse for these ugly ass faces and this horrible anatomy. Catwoman's contorted in a way that just makes absolutely no sense. Her face looks ridiculous, but she's not the star of the show. It's Harley Quinn's poorly drawn face, which unfortunately steals the spotlight here. 
Take it away, burn it, give me that sweet cover A. Spider-Woman number one, you knew this would be on here. You might remember this 1 in 50 Spider-Woman variant cover from my top 100 most controversial comics video. We've mentioned a couple covers in this video in which the anatomy makes no sense. Well, this one probably tops them all, but it's mostly memorable for the re ridiculously over-exaggerated ass crack. To this day, it's been parodied a million times over, but what people forget is how good the main cover was. Yes, this was the one that made the news and everything, but the cover A is fantastic, with her being thrown into the foreground like that, cool background, good coloring all around. This is clearly one of the best covers probably from the entire run, and unfortunately got overshadowed by that ass. Superman Red and Blue, issue 1, cover A, versus the David Cho variant. So this particular artist has a very unique style. The only problem is that style is one that deserves to be in a upscale Manhattan apartment and maybe not so much on a comic book. Because simpletons like me and you look at this and we say, what? There were legitimately some fantastic covers from this run, and then this one, it just doesn't quite sit right. It sticks out like a sore thumb. I think too many artistic liberties were taken definitely out of people's comfort zone when you're drawing Superman. Captain Marvel 25 versus 25C. So cover A is pretty sweet. It actually does give me Aquaman vibes. I remember talking about this with some friends when this came out. This is a pretty recent book here. A lot of people felt that it gave Aquaman vibes because she kind of looks like Amber Heard here. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? Let me know in the comments. It's the issue C, which is the Stormbreakers variant, which made people even more uncomfortable. Uh, something about her glare here, something about maybe the hair going up in the corner. There is an uncomfortable energy to this cover. Adventures of Superman 500 versus the Platinum Edition. You knew this list was going to have to incorporate some 90s gimmicky covers at some point, and we're doing it here with Adventures of Superman 500, which also houses several first major appearances. Anyone who ever removed it from the polybag will immediately recognize cover A. Whereas cover B, which is the platinum version, came in a black polybag and looks a little bit different. It's one of those 90s covers that tries to frame an enhanced or foil or 3D image on the front. The problem is this image is just a little too awkwardly faded and weirdly bordered. Like, if you were going to do this, why not make it take up the whole thing? It is really hard to compare this to cover A with all those beautiful greens and perfect centering. This one's a no-brainer. This next one would never be beat. You're going up against Alex Ross. We got a Mortal Hulk issue number nine versus the variant. I think if you're doing variant covers for a comic book line that the main covers are being done by Alex Ross, the only thing you can really do is swing for the fences and just try to make something completely unique. Well, this one's definitely unique. It may have wound up a little too much in left field and is immediately impossible to compare to this awesome Alex Ross issue number nine. I personally am really not a fan of the miniature looking babyish toddler X-Men, and it just creates an overcrowded cover full of kids, basically. Whereas the Alex Ross cover A is something that would look great as a poster on your wall. Night and day. We're going to end this list with any of the six issues from the miniseries of Robin Volume 3, Cry for Huntress, versus those awful enhanced cover versions. This third Robin volume had the covers, man. Six issues and each one with some pretty memorable stuff. Unfortunately, you also had the enhanced cover variants, which are also having memorable stuff. Look at cover 1A versus 1B. 2A versus 2B. 4A, 5A, and so on and so forth. This cover enhancement was designed to move the character on the front page and came in a poly bag with a much higher price tag. Looking back now, I'd rather have the regular covers any day. Unfortunately, as someone who goes comic hunting most weekends, I tend to find the other ones a lot more. I think a lot of people were specking on it back in the 90s and thought it would be a big deal. Too bad. It's a shame because the regular covers really are quite special. Sometimes variants just crumble under the weight of an awesome main cover. Guys, don't forget to comment down below, like, subscribe, that giveaway is going to be here sooner before you know it. And as always, keep on hunting.